Hey folks, it's JD here, and look at this! Today we're looking at the Hubson X4 Desire. This drone has GPS. So, let's open it up, let's have a little look and see what we've got on the inside. So I'm very, very excited about this. I've been waiting a long time to get this one. Right, so inside the box, as you can see, you have the drone. There is a spare part box and also a controller. We'll come back to those in a minute. Okay, so there we go. Look at this. Really looks nice. Really good build quality. Very sturdy. Okay, battery compartment in the back. This battery oh, pulls out 610 milliamp hour, 7.4 volts. So this will charge via USB. It is their own proprietary USB connector, uh, but obviously we'll come back to that in a little minute. So if we just have a little look at the drone, or the quadcopter, look at that. It's very neat. It's very basic looking. Uh, to be honest with you, it doesn't need to be anything else. It looks very clean. It looks very sharp. If we turn her over, You'll see that there's an SD card slot that just slots in here now, obviously because it comes with a camera built in. Now there isn't an SD card that comes with this particular model. You're going to have to supply, supply your own. One thing I do notice is these are the landing sprigs. So you're not going to get a lot of ground clearance. Another thing I notice as well is there are tiny holes on the underside of the sprigs. So you're not going to want to land this anywhere near sand, mud, dirt or anything that can get sucked in there. Now, if anything does get sucked in there, like a blade of grass or something that, you know, that shouldn't be in there, any sort of debris, then you can, using the enclosed screwdriver, you can unscrew these little holes, these little screw holes here. And this whole cap will just pop off, revealing the cogs on the underside. Now be very, very, very careful. If you do that, you're going to want to put everything back in there the way that it comes out, otherwise it's just not going to work. So to stop you actually repairing it and doing anything, I would suggest land it on concrete, land it somewhere that is nice and solid, where you're not going to have any debris that gets sucked in there. Okay, so flipping her over, let's have a look at the camera. There's a little bit of perspex that's just on that camera. Let's take that off. So there we go little bit inset the camera is not movable it is a set camera uh, to be honest with you i've had a few recently which i have been able to maneuver myself that hasn't given me great footage so i'm intrigued to see what this camera does okay now there's a little bit of assembly that is required with this as you can see there are four um, propeller mounts there but there's no propellers so inside the box if i just tell you what i'll do for the second if I put this battery back inside here, carefully put these cables back inside as well, then what we can do, oh, this back isn't fitting on properly. Oh, there we go, it's my fault. Oh no, there we go, it's my fault. I was pushing it too far one side, not the other. So if I move that to one side, inside the box also, as you heard me say, There's the transmitter and a spare part box, which consists of screwdriver, USB charger, and two lot propellers. One lot obviously needs to go on now when you get a spare, just in case should anything happen and they get damaged. So what we're gonna do is we'll put all this stuff to one side and we'll just concentrate on fitting the propellers. Okay, so we've put everything to one side, and now we're just going to concentrate on doing these, on fixing these propellers. Now, there's one thing you have to know before you do that. Obviously, now you've got the letter of the propeller on the propeller, which corresponds to the letter on the propeller arm. Okay, so I've fixed first number a, letter A, and obviously there's two Bs and another A. So the way that the quadcopter, um, the way that the quadcopter propellers work, is that same letter have to be directly 
um, in a straight line from the last. Okay, so they have to be in a, in a straight line. So before you just fit these, if you just go and fit them willy nilly, you'll find out they won't fit. What you're looking for is on this on this letter here, there's a little indent there. Now, all these those little dents are in or on all of these other propellers. What you're going to want is that little indent fits in with this bit here. As you'll notice, there is three quarter of a circle and then there is a line that's almost looked as if it's been filed away. So what you're going to want is you're going to want to line up this little line here with that there. And then what you'll find is it goes in pretty seamless. So as I'm doing that, I may as well do the rest of them. So then there's that one. And then the last one, there's, which side is that one on? Ah, it's there, okay. That's why I couldn't see it. It was pointed at me. Right, so the way I normally uh, attach propellers is I'll do the ones, I'll do the same letters in the exact line from each other. I'll only tighten them finger tight, and then we'll come back then and we'll tighten them all off in one fell swoop. So as I've affixed the first A here, I'll do the other one, holding onto the, onto the propeller slightly. If you find that the screw doesn't screw in, then you may not have lined up the line on the propeller with the indented side of the propeller arm. So let's keep on going through. Just gently hold onto the propeller. Don't put on too much pressure because otherwise you're going to transfer that pressure onto the motor and you might damage something. So both A's are done, this B is done, and now I should just be finishing up on, on this one as well. Okay, so as I say, if you notice the screws don't go in, then there's a possibility you may not have aligned everything up correctly. So then what I'll do is just go through and just ever so gently tighten them up so that they're all finger tight there. And there we have it. You've got yourself a quadcopter with propellers. So right then, on to the next part. Now we're going to come on to the interesting part. The controller. Look at that. So again, it's quite game console-esque in its design, uh, making sure that when you, you grasp it, it just sits into your hand very nicely, automatically. Um, so this controller, as you can see, the quadcopter being GPS as well, does have a built-in barometer, so it does have altitude hold. Obviously, if there are enough satellites, then the GPS will take over. If there aren't enough satellites, then that's when the barometer will kick in, and obviously you're not going to have proper satellite lock. So to get proper satellite lock with this quadcopter, what you're going to want to do is when you put the batteries inside this controller and you turn it on, you have a little a little uh, image over here, and it'll have a number next to it. Now it's in the it's in the in the manual that it's you should have more than six satellites before you consider taking off. To be honest, I would say if you've got more than seven, I would just go one one extra on that just to be on the safe side. If you've got seven or more, then you're pretty much going to have a stable flight. If you've got six, uh, sorry, if you've got five or less, then I would say it's not going to be very stable. You're going to have the barometer kicking in, trying to hold the altitude. Plus then the satellites are going to try and kick in as well. So it might make for some quite shaky, um, shaky flight. So that will all be shown on the little screen here. There's also an altitude meter as well. So when you're zooming through the air and you're trying to get some nice aerial shots around the place, you can see over this part how many feet you are up in the air. Or oh, sorry, meters rather. How many meters you are in the air. Fantastic. I'm really looking forward to that because I've often, I've often wondered. I've got little contraptions that I can put onto the top of certain quadcopters to measure speed and measure height and things like that. But they're not always they don't always fit every every quadcopter some bog them down and some they just don't fit so this is that's going to be really interesting to see exactly how high we go when we're taking our shots and i'll put that next to the video as well so we can see exactly what is going on so you've got your standard buttons you've got your trim buttons on and off you've got your excel um, accelerator or ascent uh, um, 
accelerometer, no, accelerator and decelerator. You've got your movement as well. And also you've got two shoulder buttons. You've got your photo and video and you've got return to home. So shoulder, your shoulder video and photo, single click to take a photo, click and hold to take a video. That will then be indicated once again on the screen. Return to home function. So this isn't going to be the quadcopter trying to home in on where you are. Um, it's going to try and use the satellites and try and gauge to the best of its ability where it took off from. Because the controller doesn't have GPS built into it like the Phantoms and some of the very expensive uh, quadcopters and drones. So as a consequence, it's going to work slightly better than your standard uh, return to home. But it still might be a little bit shaky. But we'll go through all that when we're out in the field and we'll see exactly what uh, what this little baby can do. So you're going to need in the back, once again, this charger does not um, allow you to charge batteries directly from it. So you're going to need four AAA batteries. These are going to have to be pre-charged or pre-bought. Um, I'll just fit that back on there. And there we have it. So I'm really looking forward to taking this out. Uh, I hope you are too after watching this video. So please join me in the next couple of days where we're going to take this out. We're going to give it a thorough testing. Uh, the battery will give you 12 minutes of power. Uh, I don't know if that, I should imagine that is not recording video all the time either. I should imagine that's just using the GPS and just flying. Uh, so hopefully we're going to get at least 10 minutes out of the battery with us recording video as well. Uh, obviously the batteries inside the transmitter, they will last a lot longer. That a length of time is unknown at, at present, but normally the same amount of batteries can do me three flights. So you're looking best part of about 40 minutes. I'm really looking forward to taking this out. So please join me in the next couple of days when, when we do. Uh, so thank you once again, folks, for watching and listening. Um, my name, I've been JD. You've been fantastic as always. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to be up to date with all of my quadcopter videos. We're even launching competitions now as well. We're on Facebook. Come and find us under JD Reviews. Um, also under JD Quad. On there, we've got uh, a JJRC H20, which is up for grabs. Um, just got a couple of a couple of things for you guys to do, which is all in the comments. Uh, so yeah, if you don't mind, come on over and uh, help win a quad. Brilliant stuff. Well, thanks very much, folks. Until next time, happy flying.